Hey, it's Jordan with TYT, TYT Network. I'm here at Reading Frenzy in downtown Portland, Oregon. Uh, I'm here with the owner, Chloe Udaly. Uh, I want to get to your store in a minute, but you have an interesting story. You're running for city council, mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of organically went from just, you know, reading shop owner and single mother to uh, running for city council because you kind of made something go viral. Uh, talk to me about how uh, this came about. You were you took a picture of what looked like a small apartment maybe, but was in fact a very, very expensive shed. Okay. Oh, I mean, first I want to clarify, I've been politically involved and engaged my whole adult life, um, but my efforts have really rarely intersected with government. In the past 10 or 12 years, I've been really involved in disability advocacy. But in the last few years in Portland, four years to be exact, my rent has gone up 60%. And it's made uh, life incredibly challenging. And it's meant that I have a lot less time to devote to causes because I'm constantly hustling to pay my rent. So about a year and a half ago, I was um, searching Craigslist for more affordable housing than what I had at that time. And I came across a ad that said tiny home in the heart of Hawthorne, $950. And I clicked on it and I discovered that um, it was a 165 square foot, I'm going to call it an ADU, even though I don't think it was legally an ADU. And it was um, also required an undisclosed amount of labor for the landlord, help organizing her home. And uh, it was really just a bare bones space with a toilet across from the kitchen sink. Uh, and I thought, I realized if this is the reality of Portland's housing market that I was really in trouble. I'm a single parent with a kid in a wheelchair. We have very limited options, um, housing options, because so much of the housing here is inaccessible. I posted it on Facebook, as you do, and it got a ton of responses. I think something like 67 likes, 27 shares, and 127 comments. And one of the comments was my friend Dina saying, that's a goddamn shed. And so I looked <laughs> at Home Depot and discovered that yes, in fact, it, it was a shed that someone had bought and finished and painted two shades of purple. And that um, inspired me to start this Facebook group called That's a Goddamn Shed. It initially just meant as a place to commiserate and vent through humor about this out of control rental market. Because you said earlier you thought of Portland as being an affordable, relatively affordable city. And it was um, probably as recently as t eight to 10 years ago. But our rents have been increasing nonstop since the recession. And in the last 10 years, rents have gone up on average 60%, while our wages have stayed stagnant. So it's not really fair to compare Portland to places like San Francisco or Seattle, where your, in your earning potential is considerably higher um, and your dollar might stretch a little further. The shed that quickly grew to over a couple, 2,000 people, and those people started sharing their stories and their concerns and looking for help. And it quickly kind of turned into this, you know, almost joke to a clearinghouse for information and resources, a springboard for organizing and activism, and um, an, an online community, which I honestly had never really been a part of. I mean, I'm on Facebook and other social media platforms, but I, I, I use it to communicate to the outside world. Um, so this, it's really been a refuge for a lot of people. Um, I think uh, many people, myself included, have really been kind of struggling in silence because not being able to afford the rent is seen as being a, it's a personal failure. Mm -hmm. uh, but very few people can keep up the kind of rent increases that we're seeing. And so I think it's been really useful for so many of us to come together around this issue. What exactly is the reason that somebody, uh, a homeowner, a shed owner, can post something for $1,200, you know, discounted down to 900? Uh, I'm sure that's not an isolated incident. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff around here that's overpriced. You look at San Francisco, uh, Seattle to a lesser extent, uh, we know Silicon Valley, these kinds of things have really jacked up 
prices. Mm -hmm. um, but why has Portland, as we're at, coming out of a recession, as you said, people's wages are stagnant or decreasing, how does it go up 60%? What, what is going on in Portland? There's a lot of factors. So, I mean, for one thing, we have a huge influx of newcomers coming to the city. And because it is still affordable relative to other major West Coast cities, we have a lot of, a lot of those newcomers are coming with a lot of money um, and, and able to pay a lot more rent and able to uh, buy these new houses that are being built. That's one issue. Another issue is that Oregon at the state level um, 20 in the last 20 to 30 years, they instituted a ban on mandatory inclusionary zoning. So, what does that mean? So mandatory inclusionary zoning is a tool that allows cities and municipalities to require developers to build a certain amount of affordable housing uh, when they do new developments. Mm -hmm. And we are one of two states in the entire country that has a ban on MIZ, and the other one is Texas, which I consider a rather dubious uh, honor. <laughs> and it's obviously anti-progressive, and many people think it actually violates FHAA uh, rules because of the adverse effect on ethnic and racial minorities and other marginalized groups. Unfortunately, uh, we've yet to see a lawsuit come together, but that's a possibility. We got a partial overturn in our short session this year. Oregon's legislature only meets, uh, does a full session every other year. We have a ban on rent control, which is more common across the country, um, but it's a statewide ban. So cities are kind of powerless to, to take action to stabilize rents and, and use rent control as a way to mitigate displacement. So some of the other reasons, well, Airbnb is real popular here. Mm. And you can look um, on Inside Airbnb and see that we have hundreds of homes full, uh, that are available, full houses year round that are clearly illegal um, short-term rentals, people turning former residences into businesses, essentially. And people like to discount the impact of that. It, you know, it's, it, it's probably somewhere between 500 and 1,500 houses, but when you consider how low our vacancy rate is, it's, I think, under 2% right now. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of houses um, to be taken off the market. It's also a lot more profitable to uh, develop property here than it is in other areas because we don't charge things like access and linkage fees. So there are many, many different factors um, as to why this is happening. And unfortunately, too many landlords are exploiting the situation, price gouging, profiteering. And the thing that really galls me, you know, including in the instance of the shed, is that is, was not a legal dwelling. And for someone to be charging market rate or even luxury rate for substandard housing is outrageous. I mean, it's kind of, we've, I'm sure every city is like this, but I lived for 18 years in a house that would probably be considered substandard in some regards. But, you know, my landlord cared whether I lived or died and if there were problems with essential services, he was on it. What a concept. Yeah. And in exchange for living in a house that, you know, had a lot of deferred maintenance and cosmetic issues, I paid below market rate rent. And now because of this housing shortage and the fact that we don't have rent control um, and Airbnb kind of inflating landlords' ideas of what they should be receiving uh, because they don't understand that, you know, when you sign a lease with someone, you're striking a bargain, you're charging them less money in exchange for a long-term, longer-term relationship and some stability and uh, minimizing overturn. You don't get to charge short-term rental rates for rent, except in Portland you do because we have no restrictions. We also have almost no enforcement on Airbnb. Landlords are not licensed. Rentals are not inspected. It's all complaint driven. So, you know, as a as a non Oregonian, uh, my image and many people's images of Oregon and Portland is very liberal and progressive. These do not sound like liberal progressive policies instituted by the government. So, um, you're running for city council. 
if, if the state is known as this bastion of progressivism and we're in it, you know, community, why, why are they getting, I mean, to, to be the only one with Texas, like you said, very dubious. Why, why is it that a state that has many, many progressives, uh, Portland is a hub for young, uh, young people and, you know, uh, slightly older progressives, uh, why is it that these really lack of enforcements, regulations, and laissez-faire are going into effect? Well, I think we get way too much credit um, for some of our earlier progressive legislation. Um, I don't think that Oregon deserves its progressive badge or really um, its green badge. 